and welcome to episode two of Terry's Saturday Boogie Woogie Tutorial. Well, it's not going to be always Boogie Woogie, but it's mainly Boogie Woogie Tutorials. And today I've had quite a lot of requests. I've got lots of requests um, for a Ray Charles song uh, called What Did I Say? I've done it a few times on my channel and it's been covered by a lot of people. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis covered it and it's called What Did I Say? So we're going to have a little look at that. But first of all, um, I just want to recap on what we did last week before we were so rudely interrupted. And if you want to come here else with the old, uh, the old camera, let's just move that out of the way. And we, last week we looked at the sort of basic chop, the left hand. We did the intro, didn't we? That's it. And then we went into the chop in the left hand, which is... And we were counting the bars, weren't we? We were one, two, and two. memory serves me correctly before I was um, <laughs> interrupted by the, uh, the Hackney Council. Hackney Council. <laughs> That's as far as we got. Now I'm, I'm just going to continue another little riff on that before we move on to the what did I say because uh, this is what I would have done for the last 20 minutes of the show of the show of the tutorial last week. Uh, there's another little riff that I'm going to show you now and I'm going to play it through Quite, you know, at a moderate speed first, and then I'm going to break it down as I normally do and, and tell you the notes and the fingers. So, after you've kind of done your intro, which we've gone over, and we've done the chop and the chords, counting the bars, there's another little riff, and it's this a one, two, three, four. very slowly I'll show you the right hand first and then we'll combine the left and the right together and try and coordinate them okay so here is middle C and we all know where middle C is by now don't we so thumb on middle C okay and it goes like this the index finger goes on the E and the fourth finger on the G okay and then back rock back to the C with the thumb so now you might notice this finger, the middle finger and the little finger, are left free to play the F and the A. So it's... So you keep rocking back to the C, so it's C and then E and G, back to C, and then F and A. And the fingering is quite important here really, because if you kind of go like that, it's kind of too much of an inconvenient stretch for your fingers. So if you can kind of go, you know, index finger on the E, fourth on the uh, G, leaving the um, F and the A kind of with these two fingers, the third finger and the little finger already resting on them. So it's, so it's like this, look. Back, rock back to the C. You always rock back to the C. So we're going to count the bars again. One. And two two bars and three bars and four bars now when we change to the F for bar five the great thing about this is there's only going to be one note in the difference in the right hand and that is instead of instead of playing the E is going to be going to the E flat okay So basically, it's, it's, it's just the same as that, except the E becomes E flat when you change to this. This is bar five. And then six, bar six. And then go back to the E and G for bar seven. And bar eight. And then for bar nine, it's just the same thing again, but in G. So... So the thumb is on the G, the index on the B, the fourth on the D. 
and then you kind of leave the third and the little finger, the third to play the C and the little finger to play the E. So, but this is only for one bar, so this is quite a short bar. One, and then down to F. So on the way down for F, it's not this, it's same thing. It's the same as in C and G, only it's in F now. Fingering's the same, except remember there's a B flat in F. So to try not to play, you don't want that. You've got to remember the B flat. So same fingering, B flat and D. And then it's back to C again. play that one more time very slowly but with the left hand now the left hand is going to be playing the chop because we're, 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 it's only episode two and we're going to just continue with the chop for a bit before we move on to different left hands okay so here we go one two three and so basically i'm playing two hits in the left hand of the c and the g so when you play, so C and G in the left hand, like that. When you play E and G and in this hand. And then when you go to the F and A in the right hand, you play C and A in the left hand. So. Except we have to try and get it with a bit more swing. For the left hand for the F chop, that is when we flatten the E in the right hand to the E flat. And you get that. Back to C again in the left hand and in the right. left hand you go to G the G chop when you play the G riff in the right hand so it's then go down to the F and then back to C again Once you've learnt this, and this, and this, so three movements, C, F, and the G. And what we do, you see, what, what makes it sound a bit more kind of, you know, bluesy and a bit cooler, if that's the right word, is when you kind of, when there's an opportunity to slide off one of the flat notes, which in this case is going to be E flat, you slide it like this with the, with the, with the same fingering. So instead of just going straight to a, on occasion you slide it off. We I mean, don't do it all the time. Like, you don't want that effect because it sounds like you're clashing notes all the time. But you sort of do it once in a while. So it's kind of. Sliding from the, it's always the one note in the middle you slide from. So in G, it's the B flat. It's always the one in the middle. I mean, for now, anyway. Get back down to F. Get back to C. And the other little thing you might have noticed I'm doing is this. It's kind of trilling the note. So. That 
that is something that's difficult to play slow when you do the trill because you're, you're trilling the um, a trill is basically this. I'm trilling the E and the G. So you've got three little movements in, in that riff. You've got the basic riff itself, which is. You've got the sliding from the, the flat, which is the E flat. And you've got the third movement, which is a trill. which is obviously you only flatten in the right hand, you flatten the E to the E flat. I'm trilling these two, the E flat and the G. And the G the same. the turnaround last week as well. It's an alternative to the... It's... You can use this as an intro or like a little break in the middle. You, you know, after every 12 bars, you've got to have a break. It's either a... Or a... Another little option is this one. We, I think we covered it last week, but I'll quickly go over it now. Left hand really easy. Left hand just B, just one note B flat A A flat and G. The right hand is E flat with the fourth finger. Thumb on the G. Left hand on the B flat. Then hit the C with your middle finger. Move down to the A in your left hand now and play F sharp and D in the right hand and then C. So you go. Move the thumb down to the E flat when the left hand plays the A flat. And then slide under for the E and then end on the G in the left hand and E, G and C in the right hand. And then this little turn around, F on its own in the left hand, F sharp, C and E flat and then G in the left hand and F, G, B, and D in the right hand. So. Okay then, so. Phew, are there any questions? In fact, um, is anybody watching? Yeah, we've got quite a few people watching. <laughs> uh, lots of people from a lot of different countries. The uh, Six Finger One says hello. Six Finger One. I know Six Finger <laughs> One. Hi, Six Finger One. Cameron, Cameron is watching. Cameron? Wait. Yeah. Wow, how did you do that? I don't know. Um, <laughs> people say don't forget Scotland. Oh, Scotland. Okay. The whole of Scotland, I think that is. I'll play O'Flair of Scotland uh, <laughs> later on. I'll do a tutorial on it. <laughs> I know all the words as well. Okay. Say thanks for this Terry loving the tutorial. That's good. I hope it's. Uh, I hope I'm, I hope it's coming across okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to find a lot. There's so many going past. Olivier is watching. He says a great idea to continue the lessons of last week. Yeah, we're going to do it every Saturday. I mean, there'll be the odd Saturday when I'm off because I've gone the odd, the odd little uh, weekend away or I've got a gig or something. But I'll always do an announcement in the week to say you know whether it's on or off. I'll, I'll give you notice, a few days notice, and. Um, yeah, keep the requests coming for what you want to learn. Now, I've had a lot of requests. People want to learn Amazing Grace. But the one for this week, is, which I'm going to go to now, is What Did I Say? I'm going to have a little look at that now. And keep the requests coming in the co in the comments uh, below. I want to learn this or I want to learn that. And I, I do go through the comments as, as best I can. And, and you know, we'll, 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 learn, we'll, we'll, we'll just teach you what, what I can. We can learn together. We'll learn, even if I don't know it, I'll, I'll have a go at it and we'll learn it together. How about that? Great. <laughs> okay. So, shall we go on to what did I say? Yeah, what, uh, there's one more request either for a future live stream. Um, it says, uh, great balls of fire they'd like to see at some point. Yeah, we'll do that, definitely, yeah. yeah. Great balls of fire, good idea, yeah, brilliant. Okay then, so this is what did I say. 
I'll just play the. We're not, I'm not going to play the whole song, you know. Um, I'm, I'm just going to play the intro first because the intro kind of starts like this. <laughs> playing it that fast <laughs> at this stage okay so shall we look at the start the very very start now i think originally the ray charles version is brilliant i think it's played on a wurlitzer electric piano but jerry lee did, did a great version as well and he did it on a um, acoustic piano um in c as well well just a quick thank you to jim jk who's just donated in the super chat wow thank you jim jim old boy thank you in fact traditional traditionally when someone donates something i always have a little sip of cider in celebration <laughs> okay then should we look at this yeah here we go now it's the c two c's below middle c so there's middle c go down one octave to there and another octave to here and it's little finger always the little finger starts it on the c which is here okay so it goes middle finger on the g index finger on the b flat and thumb on the C. So it's... So it's just these notes. One, two, three, four. Four notes. C, G, B flat, and C again. So it's... Now what you sort of do with the rhythm of it, so instead of playing it, you know, to the on the beat all the time, so like that, that's too mechanical. So what, what it kind of does, it kind of what we call pushes, it pushes in, so it's, you see, it's, so that C always pushes, it kind of jumps ahead of the beat, so if you've got like a little metronome, I haven't got one on me actually, but, see how that C was jumping in, it's called pushed, they call it push, so it's like C, E, G, B flat. Then we go up to F and play the same thing again, except it's F, C, E flat, and F. Then back to C again. Then G, and it's G, D, F, and G, and then back to F back to C again. So one more time. So it, ju it just starts with the left hand basically before the right hand comes in. So it's one, two, three, four. Then F, C, E flat, F. Back to C again. Accurate actually, is it? Then. And that's when the right hand comes in. Now, the right hand comes in around the middle C area. So, you got the uh, middle finger on the um, on the C, little finger on the G on the E. So, and then what I'm going to do in the left hand instead of playing the chop, playing because it's too fast, you don't really need to because the right hand is making up for the rhythm. So it's going to go. So it's just, it's playing the chop, but instead of going two hits, it's just playing one hit. One hit on the C and G, and one hit on the C and A. So. The right hand riff is this, look. Middle finger on middle C, little finger on the E, 
and it goes like this, C and E. So it's C and E together, mi middle finger on the uh, C, little finger on the E. I hit it twice, then the thumb goes to the G, then the uh, index finger goes to the B flat. And then the, the middle finger ends on the C, so it's... So... Same with then, only in F. F and A. Um, back, so it's F and A, C, E flat, and F. And then back to C again. And then it's G. Uh, so we go up to G, the left hand. So you remember the left hand is just playing instead of going so that would be too much it's too, there's no need for it there's no need for it it only needs to do the so you got the middle finger on the g little finger on the b on the b thumb goes to the d the mid the index goes to the um f and then the third on the g and the little finger on the b back down to f and then when we end it then so it's that kind of thing again a bit like this B flat left hand E and G rock back to the C Rock back to the C again. So, so far we've got this. questions on that one um not many there's quite a lot going on in the chat but that's just okay other things um someone says that they're going to nail this with practice a lot of people saying thank you for the tutorial okay and i might just go as far as to say that genius expert must be your biggest fan oh yeah i've heard of genius expert yeah i, yeah. Think, he, I think he watches me quite a lot yeah i think he's a, he seems like a massive fan of yours that's i'm not good. gonna lie i'm gonna yeah, say they so cheer <laughs> cheers for the view um okay. there's been a few super chats as i've seen the number go up but there seems to be a glitch where i'm not getting the notifications to say who it is okay but you um i've seen that you do afterwards um find out who has been giving you the super chat and oh okay yeah 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 I'll, well yeah I'll, I'll see i see because obviously when you're pointing the camera at the keys the no i've looked back and there seems oh, to be a glitch okay. with youtube where it's not giving us the oh, notifications dearie, which dearie, is a problem dearie. but we will send you a little thank yes, you yes, message absolutely, later absolutely absolutely okay well, it's just come through that we've had one from paul smith paul which smith. is very oh, no, paul, I know paul smith paul smith said, says yeah. the sun is up the sky is blue it's beautiful and so are you Dear Terry, won't you come piano and play? That's a dear prudence, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I recognise that. <laughs> thank, thank you, Yuval and Zedman, for talking about me. That's very kind. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So I don't think there's any particular questions on that, what you've just played right now. Just a lot of things going on in the chat otherwise. <laughs> okay, then. Well, I will uh, go on the next part then. then yeah. And the other part is this look. In what, what did I say? It goes, like this. it goes to middle C, strangely enough. <laughs> It's a bit like, where is middle C, where is, it's a bit, it's down that, in fact it's exactly like that, so it goes like this. So basically you're building up on the C seventh chord, so it's, so it's C with your thumb, and then it's E, and then 
then G with the third finger. And then your fourth finger goes on the E flat, the B flat, sorry. So. So it's a bit like, where is middle C? Where is middle C? Where is middle C? Where? So, after the. the left hand so instead of just the right hand going so each note plays eight times one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight one so the so what you do the the left hand accents each one so each bar is accented For a little solo, and then it's like, okay. I'm going to show you the solo now. So let's just take it from the start of what did I say, just in case we've lost our places. Woo! Okay, so this, I suppose you could look at that song like it's in four different stages. So the, f the first stage would be the intro. The second stage would be the... The third stage is the... Now let's look to the fourth stage. Now the fourth stage is kind of a little solo before he comes in with the vocals. Now the, the left hand here, you can do either two things. You can kind of just keep it at the sort of straight, straight one, like this. Uh, and what that's doing there is just playing C and F. Sorry, F and C, and then F and D. Or you can play it twice, like the, the chop. It's like a... It doesn't really matter which way. They both sound pretty effective. So what we're doing in the right hand here for the solo, we, we're, we're going to start the solo in F, because we've already started the build up in C, which is going... To, to this. Now what that is, I'm playing the F, the chop is being played in the left hand. Okay, so in the right hand, I'm playing an E flat and an A. So it's kind of the index finger on the E flat and then you can kind of either, yeah, fourth finger I would use on the A. So it's... Okay, so for the F chord, that's all you, you know, to start with, that's all you really need to do. Then when you go to C, back to C, go to that riff that we covered before. So F. Back to C. And the C riff is, as we know, that's where you slide off the E flat to the E. It's just that E and G. So. G bit, this is a good one, you'll like this. When the left hand plays the, the chop, the G chop, the right hand is gonna go. It's B with your thumb, it is E with your index finger and it's little finger or fourth finger on the G. Kind of like that, but the, the left hand is playing G chop, so. Now what we do, we move down in semitones, it moves down chromatically, so it's B, E and G, to B flat, E flat, and F, F sharp, I should say, and then A, D, and F. So, so, and now when we go to F, we're moving down to F now. So what we do, where you've gone from G on the G, when you go to F, you stay where you are with the right hand, thumb on the A, 
index on the D, and F. The little finger on the F or the fourth on the F. And then that moves chromatically down and then again. See? A, D, and F. A flat, C sharp, and E. And then G, C, and E flat. So the whole thing has been a chromatic thing. So the G is. When you go down to F. You see that? And then back to C. So solo we've got. part of the solo which is the E flat and the A. And when we move to the C it goes back to the And then this is the G part. F in the left hand. And that's when it goes. Yeah mama don't you treat me wrong. So let's before we go into the verse, I can yeah, you can I can teach you the melody if you don't want to sing it. Okay, so um, so just from the start, this is this is it. I'll, I'll, I'll play it so slowish. the singing comes in but we're just looking at the intro for now so that's kind of it with the intro that's a sort of intro and the solo part that i did is just a sort of an improvisational bit you know you can kind of do lots of things there but i'm just giving you an example you know there's probably about 100 different things or something that you could do in the actual solo but that is just an example to sort of yeah <laughs> But the intro is probably the hardest, well, I'd say the hardest part, that's the hardest work. Because if you're singing it, you're just obviously singing it, or if you're playing the melody, you'll just probably do it. And then there's a solo in the middle, and so on. So that's pretty much it for the intro. I could show you lots of different improvisational parts when it comes to the solo. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the intro for now. Anyone? Well, Marta's given to the super chat saying, your videos have inspired me to start practicing piano again. Who's that again, else? Mart. Mart, okay, hi Mart. A little celebratory drink for that old boy. Mart is following the tutorial closely. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear. And by the way, this tutorial is staying on uh, the YouTube, my YouTube channel. So you know, if you want to go back to it, you can you know you can go back to it, and um, I'll, I'll keep it on there. So as, as long as you want, so you can keep looking at it. If it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, Russell says that his. Um He's able to play piano quite well with his right hand, but he finds it hard to make his left hand do the same thing and to yeah. cooperate. Have you got any advice for like building strength in the left hand? Well, you see, the thing is about that, yes. I would just, you know, it's almost a case of, to start with, it is about building strength with the left hand. And the thing is about the left hand, in fact, one thing to remember about our fingers is the little fingers and the fourth fingers actually are, are the weakest fingers, you see they kind of don't really want to, they haven't got much strength in them. But the more you use them, there's, you know, it's, it's like sending your fingers down the gym, basically, like doing a workout. And that's what they have to do. And what tends to happen, and, and, I, I, and this is a common one that I, I do see. Well, I mean, I'm just looking at the, what they call the chop in the left hand, okay? So, um, your little finger has got to keep pumping away on that C there. And what happens is when people are practicing or they're concentrating on the right hand, they they tend to sort of the, the little finger gets a bit lazy, and they, and they you just hear the G and the 
mm. and the and the and the sea's not doing anything. And but and the thing is, the trouble is when you when that happens, you lose base, you lose foundation. So my advice would be. Um, you know, just kind of do a little a finger exercise would be just the little finger on its own, go like this. Just with the little finger. And in the right hand, you know, instead of doing the chop, you can do, you can still do that thing that I said last week, count the bars. Now, just put the little finger on this, on this C, which is two Cs below middle C. So it's, so, and you're going to pump it one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now to add the right hand, you can and three and two. You can count the bars with the right hand. So don't worry about playing the C and the A at this point. If you just want to get strength and exercise into the little fingers, so those one, two, and two, and three, and four, and then when you go to the F. Just, you have to go to your, in, um, yeah, sorry, bring, no, you don't now, because we're going to be pr doing the chop afterwards. So the little finger moves up to the F. Bar five, six. Move back to the C, seven. Eight. Nine is on the G. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Now, so what I did there, instead of playing the chop like this, I'm just using the, the the, my little finger and this is purely for the purpose of getting strength into the little finger in the left hand so and you don't even have to add the right hand at this point but the idea is really to get the strength into the little finger and count the bar so if we were to go now we add let's add these now the chop so one and the thing is keep an eye on your finger because sometimes it can stop working and you, you don't even notice it yourself. and let, So you've got to watch it. You, it's, it's almost got a mind of its own. So it's like one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But like I said, start off with the single note. One, two, and keep counting like that. And then move up. To, and eventually, you know, you will gain strength in the little finger. And then about the coordination part, okay. Well, then the idea is, and I, th I think I said this uh, last week, it's you've got to, you've got to, um, start very, very slow at a snail's pace because speed will come on its own. Speed comes on its own eventually sometimes it comes quicker sometimes it's longer it doesn't matter but the point is if you just sort of take it at a snail's pace and go and two and this is coordination because i'm starting off by the the right hand is counting it's helping me count the bar so one and eventually you see when you get a little bit bored of just doing that you can go one two I'm using the same chords, but I'm just using them a bit more elaborate. So, so that's the best advice I would give before learning any kind of complicated kind of um, left hands, you know, like involves like, you know, Albert Hammond's um, Boogie Woogie Stomp left hand. I would advise everybody that's been starting to, to sort of start with the chop really, or just one finger, the little finger preferably. And you'll be amazed if you did that for one hour every day, it'd be probably a bit boring just playing with one, your little finger and you'd probably be a bit sore actually as well. But eventually you'll kind of learn to sort of coordinate the left and right hand and it will come on its own probably without you noticing. So. Um, let me see what people have been saying. Matty England says Matty that England, oh boy. he's finding the um, tutorials helpful and he's been back to last week's one at least 20 times already. <laughs> That's Matty from Cornwall, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yes, yes, I know. Um, PJ Film says, is it? Um, do you recommend keeping the beat with your foot while you're playing? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, especially if you've got sort of, um, kind of loud shoes on with a good heel and a wooden floor. Really... You, it's, you can use it as like a percussion, you know. Yeah, definitely. 
Definitely. Olivier says, have you got a license for that broadcast? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, I've applied for it, but it hasn't come through yet. And um, <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't been uh, disturbed yet, actually. <laughs> Thank you for the kind comment, James Stevens. James Stevens has been leaving nice comments. Great. Um, Richard Grotters really wants you to play in the mood. Okay, then. Should we do a quick version of it? For, for, okay. <laughs> I think everyone on the chat's been really liking that song, so that's a good one. Well, the thing is, I, I tell you what, I'm glad that was suggested, actually, because that is related to what we've been doing, you see, because In The Mood, I think that was like in the 1940s, Glenn Miller, one of the first sort of pop songs, really, because it's, a, again, it's a 12-bar sort of thing. So, the chord, when we're doing this, you see this chord here? I mean, in the mood, okay, it's, originally it's in A flat, okay, because it's brass, so brass like to play in flats. But I've, I've put it to C for the piano for the purpose of this tutorial. So anyway, apart from the intro issue, Okay, I was using the chop in the left hand, so it's the same kind of thing, really. So this chord here, C, I'm just splitting the, the notes up. So it's E, G, and C, so it's. Then it goes to F. Instead of playing an F chord, he's just splitting the notes up like an arpeggio sort of thing. Back to C. So instead of this, by the way, instead of this inversion of C, it's this one where you, st you put the C at the top and start on the E. Then on the G, it's G, B and D. So instead of going back down, so on the G goes. 
It just does that in the middle. It's a different sort of turnaround. But basically what I'm saying is you can see how that is related to what we've been doing. So one, two, and three, and four, and two, counting the bars. It's the same sort of thing. So except we're splitting the chord up going one, two, and three, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So you see that again, just because the turnaround is different at the end. It's the same, it's a 12, the th in theory, it's still a 12 bar blues, really. <laughs> so yeah, so anyway. Nice, yeah. a lot of people like that, um, that version of In The Mood and also the tutorial, so that's good. A, quick, a um, very quick tutorial in The Mood. Yeah. <laughs> I am an overcomer, says. Uh, yes, I know I'm overcoming, yeah, yeah. When did you start playing piano? Well, when I was a kid, really, um, sort of started uh, dabbling, I suppose, in it when I was uh, probably about five or six, uh, seeing my dad repairing a piano in our front room, we had an old straight strung upright piano and my dad, I think he was trying to fix a couple of the notes on it or trying to tune it or something. And I happened to walk in and uh, there he was playing Jerry Lee Lewis with the front off. It's the fact that the front was off it. That's what really kind of grabbed me. I love seeing all the hammers, you know, the mechanics of it working. And the fact he was actually playing it with his foot, actually. <laughs> he played it with his foot. I thought, blimey, I want to do that. So I said, you know, can you teach me? So he, he you know, he taught me, um, a few little you know easy things one finger things and then as the years rolled on i sort of took an interest in it and and, and i eventually joined his band because he was he's in a in fact there he is look there's a photograph of me dad here look 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 can, can you get that with the camera that's his band in fact that's him there with the guitar okay and this was probably taken in about 1965 66 it's obviously the 60s you can see they're all dressed kind of quite quite you know beatlesy and all that and yeah, so you can imagine. And anyway, he, he was mainly a guitarist, but he played piano and accordion as well. I and mean, he still does, by the way, he's still gigging. So he's, and he's got his own YouTube channel. In fact, it was him, it's my dad, that wrote Old Joe Blues. He, he wrote that for, for Old Joe, as people that follow my channel will know who Old Joe is. <laughs> and uh, he wrote, so yeah, I mean, he's kind of in his 70s now, but I mean, he's still gigging, still playing still um, writing songs and stuff. So he's got his own, his name is Kevin R. Miles. You've got to put the R in, because apparently there's another Kevin Miles. So Kevin R. Miles, when you go to his channel, he's got a few songs on there. <laughs> um, Dobby asks, what are uh, Kevin's favourite songs to play on piano? What, my dad? Yeah. God, you have to go to his channel and ask him, I don't know. <laughs> uh, he, I think it changes, you know, as, yeah. as, as time goes on. He, yeah, you'll have to ask, you'll have to ask him, I'm not sure. Jody but, Grubb says that Jim. in... In the mood was um, his parents' favourite song. Ah, uh, right, Jody. I know Jody Grubbs, yeah. Uh, there's, oh, there's quite a lot that, to go through. Um, okay. Yeah. There's just uh, Chisler26 says inversions. I just learned about inversions. Inversions, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I think they like the inclusion of sort of different inversions. Well, basically, well, let's have a quick look at inversions while yeah. we've got five minutes, okay? Uh, uh, inversion is just this look. There's middle C, okay? Now, if you have middle C here, C. Miss one, play one, miss one, play one. That's what I always say. Uh, and then you've got a C chord. C, E, and G. Now if you take that C and take it away, like, like building blocks, you know, take one from the bottom, put it at the top. That's, so this, this, sorry, this version, that's called its root position. That's C in its root position. When you put the C at the top, that becomes a first inversion, you see. And then when you take away that E there and you put it at the top there, that becomes a second inversion. And then when you take the G away there and you put it at the top, you go back to root, so you've got root, first inversion, second inversion, back to root. And that's the same with all chords. So root, first, second, root, first, second. And it's really handy when you're playing boo because you don't want to play everything in its root position because it sounds a little bit, you know. Actually, it's all right for the Beach Boys, aren't it? The Easter ba 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 Yeah. Yeah, that one. What's it? California. It worked for them, obviously. But, you know, but I'm saying you don't want to always do that. It's, you said sometimes you want to put the seat up. Root, 
one, two, root one, two. And the same goes with all chords. So if you're in F, it's the same thing, G. And that's why you learn kind of arpeggios. So you, an arpeggio is when you kind of get a chord, like a root chord of, of C, you go, and do the inversions. And instead of playing them like chords, you split the notes up. There you go, in the mood. In the mood is based round a first inversion of a chord. So if, if in the mood was in C, for example, it's based around C's first inversion. So you put the C at the top, and there's C first inversion, split the notes up, and you got. Oh, that's a good idea for the song. For a song, said Glenn Miller one day, and he just went. The whole hook that's the hook of the song isn't it the first inversion of okay in that case it was in a flat but it's the same same thing only in c in in this case dobby says also um what was what are your favorite songs to play on the piano well i've got a number of songs really i mean obviously i'm a big sort of boogie woogie fan i like jerry Lee lewis i like ray charles i think ray charles was brilliant um I love Nina Simone, actually. I think she was a great piano player. And um, Alan Price out of The Animals, House of the Rising Sun and all that. I've, I've got a lot of, just about a, a lot of B Bumble and the Stingers, Nutrocker, on the rebound, Floyd Kramer, that kind of thing. Uh, Nutrocker, now there's one we should do a, a tutorial on one of the, one of the weeks. Yeah, but I, I love playing, you know, I, I like playing all sorts of stuff i like the i i kind of like the up tempo stuff because it gets people dancing and stuff but I, yeah i like i like a few uh, a few of the sad songs as well you know <laughs> nice boogie woogie lake girl says hi terry it's roxy i know roxy boogie woogie lake girl how you doing all right <laughs> and zedman one is asking the important questions on the stream he says terry sweet or dry cider dry oh every time it's got to be dry <laughs> absolutely old boy got to be dry and you know cold you don't want a warm cider do you Ooh, no <laughs> good advice i'd rather do with that no i wouldn't no actually no i wouldn't rather do with that but yeah cold preferably bobby elliott says um terry do you remember the song that you played in the video that's called take me to church uh, i'm sure if you watched it back you would remember i think it's um, a closer walk with me isn't it is it is, is it that one or not but whatever it was if you watch it back i'm sure you'll remember uh but bobby elliott elliott says that they've been trying to learn it by ear but seeing you do a, a tutorial on it one of the days would be really it's helpful take me to church yeah okay I'll, I'll look at it and i'll i wish i thought it was that but it might be a different one because I, I, I do quite a few hymns. it might be that one i'm not sure yeah okay okay <laughs> matty england has given to the super chat saying thanks for another amazing lesson matty old oh boy you're so generous and i want a drone lesson one of the days because <laughs> um somebody bought me a drone two Christmases ago. But I just don't know what you, how you work them. <laughs> I've got a clue. I've plugged it in and charged you up, but I, I don't know. I'll probably just, if go in the end, just lose it or something. So I'm going to come to Cornwall. We'll go out droning. So I, I think he's into, uh, into drones. Mm. Nice. Um, local experimentalist says, hello, Terry. It's me, Ken Kaz. Yes, I know Ken Kaz. I know Ken. Ken, I... Yep, Ken. South Africa, I think. Am I right? I'm not sure. It doesn't okay. say here, but okay. we'll soon find out. Okay. I think it's Ulrich. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but Ulrich says, Terry, do you know Good Golly Miss Molly? Yeah, I'll tell you what, we'll do... There's not enough time now, because I'm going to mm -hmm. finish in a couple of minutes. Good Golly Miss Molly, we will do a tutorial. I do know it, and I've... Actually, I think I might have put a version of it on my channel, but... Um, We'll, do a, we'll definitely do a tutorial on that, Little Richard, yeah. We've also had a couple of requests for you to do a tutorial one day on Amazing Grace, because I know that's one of uh, people's favourites that you do. Okay, okay, well, 
what should we do next week then? Should we do Amazing Grace next week, do you think? Is, has there been a couple of, couple, of, couple of people wanting that stuff? So we can... We can do Amazing Grace next week because, I mean, that, that is a good one to do because the great thing about that tune, actually, it doesn't have to be the boogie-woogie kind of thing. You, I, I know I did a boogie-woogie version of it because, you know, but you can... like this to start with. that and then eventually you can go you can, but again that's just Oops. putting your own interpretation on it but yeah maybe we'll do that one next week well at least for half the lesson and then the other half we can do good golly Miss Myers. Dennis and Matthias really do like the idea of you playing Amazing Grace next week, so I think that would be a hit. Okay. A lot of people are saying that, actually. Let's do it then. Um, Let's do that. A lot of people uh, said that they... I don't know if they've subscribed only after seeing that video, um, but they say, who suggested Dance Monkey to Terry? Was it Elsie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could do a tutorial. <laughs> no, okay. I'm not going to do that now, don't worry. No, but like a lot of people um, have subscribed after seeing that video, so big thank you if you did. Yeah, I, I, I seen that video. It was like an old man, wasn't it? Playing it. <laughs> Oh yeah, wait, sorry, it wasn't you, sorry. Yeah, it's like an old man. It's an old man. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, and he yeah, and he he kind of I think he was copying me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> I don't know who he is. I don't know who he could be. It could be Dr. K, doesn't it? Yeah, it could, be, it could be. You never could know. Be. He's the master of disguise, isn't he? <laughs> a lot of people are saying they're going to watch this live stream back and I think it's important to just mention once again that if you have just arrived now a lot of people are saying that they have just got home uh, this will be on again it will uh, it'll be constantly on the channel after we finish live streaming yes and may I just say this is Elsie doing the camera ah, yeah. work who's my daughter Should I come around Elsie. are we on Elsie? are we on yeah we are around. oh yeah oh yeah okay yeah hello <laughs> this is Elsie as you all probably know anyway um and Elsie's going to be doing her live stream here from my studio, from our studio, I should say, <laughs> here at 8 o'clock GMT, British time. 8 o'clock tonight, 8 till... Is it 8 till 9, Elsie? 8 till 9, yeah. Elsie's going to be doing her live stream 8 till 9 tonight. And uh, if you can tune into that, it's great. Look, show the, show the, show the guitars that you're going to be using. Okay, Elsie. yeah, I'll show you the guitars. Hang look, on. Now, Elsie plays guitar. Yeah. And look, that's her electric guitar up there. Yeah. That's one of my acoustics. I don't use that one as much as my other one. My other one is upstairs, but uh, I'll be using an acoustic guitar, an electric, maybe the ukulele, the ukulele. and definitely the piano. I'll and say. look, show this old Moog. Okay. Here. You see that? That is an old Moog. It's a bit of a museum piece, but it does all work. And it's uh, from 1979. <laughs> it's called a Moog Prodigy. So there you go. It's, it's a museum piece, but I do use it on my recordings from time to time. <laughs> a I'm, I'm a bit of an antique uh, and analog synth guy as well as the uh, and look this is a band that i was in in 1985 i went to switzerland and i lived there for nine months and that's me there and um i, I yeah i joined this band and i learned such a lot of, a lot of things from especially this guy here his name's phil henry he's an absolute genius amazing keyboard player amazing singer amazing guitarist he's a multi-talented man i haven't seen him for about we well, haven't seen it since about 1988 or 89, something like that. So it's been a long, long time. But Phil is an absolute... I think he lives in LA. He might be watching. It'd be great yeah. if he is. His name's Phil Henry, and he's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, guitarist, singer, songwriter. And he basically taught me pretty much all about chords, you know. I don't mean corduroy trousers. <laughs> <laughs> chords on the... Yeah, he did. He taught me loads, you know, jazz. He's a real sort of jazzer and... Yeah, a brilliant guy. Phil, if you're watching, get in touch. <laughs> Dobby um, has uh, given a good idea where, in the description after the live stream, could you put the names of the songs that you've been showing just so people can find it with ease? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, thank you for all the nice people saying things to me. I'm saying hello to all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, and yeah, there's 
I think um, everyone's liked this stream a lot, so Rick Wakeman would be proud of you. <laughs> right, I, what I'm going to do now, we're going to sort of round it off with my little... I'm, I'm, I played it in on the intro, I'm going to play it out and name that tune. Thank you and bye-bye.